Eliza, children's librarian at the Waukee Public Library. And I'm here with this week's Elementary Maker Monday, which is a super simple experiment that's going to make dancing popcorn. So for this experiment, you're just going to need a clear plastic cup, which is something that you can see through. It could be glass too, just something that's clear. Um, you're going to need soda, and it works best with a clear soda, like a seltzer, club soda, or I think we have 7-Up here, just something clear that you can see that's carbonated. Um, and then you're also going to want unpopped popcorn kernels. And I also have some raisins today because we're gonna see if we can guess how these might react differently. So you're gonna start, oh, also um, something to stir. I have this dowel here, but you could use like a spoon or a fork or whatever you have. So we're gonna start by adding some of our popcorn to the cup. Just a little bit, you don't want a ton in there. And then some raisins right on top of that. And we're gonna see what we think is gonna happen when we pour this carbonated soda on top. So how they might react differently based on their shape and size, based on their weight. So you might wanna take one of each and kind of examine them and see what you think might happen to each different one. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna open up your soda. <laughs> Be careful it doesn't spill over on you and you're going to add it right into, you'd probably do this on a table, but I'm doing it up closer so you can see. So you're gonna pour it right in and give yourself a little bit of room at the top so that you can stir and the bubbles don't go over. So what are you noticing? You can see right away that both the kernels and the raisins are rising up and dancing. Yeah, do you have a guess why? So those bubbles are filled with carbon dioxide and when they form along the edges of the items inside the cup, it's pushing them up, loading them to the top because the carbon dioxide weighs less than the liquid inside the cup. And then when they get up to the top, what do you notice? They rise up dancing and then what happens? If you look really close across the top of your cup, you might see that there are little bits flying up off the top from where the bubbles are popping. And so when the bubbles then pop, it floats them back down to the bottom, they sink down, and then it takes a minute for the bubbles to reform around the edges and rise back up to the top. And you might also notice that the raisins tend to be rising up a little bit quicker after they fall down to the bottom. And that's because those raisins have a lot of crevices and creases, more surface area for bubbles to form on. So it's quicker for them to rise back up to the top rather than the little hard seeds that take a little bit longer to reform those bubbles. So it's just a really interesting experiment to watch. If you'd like to kind of get it moving again, you can give it a stir and create sort of more bubbles and you'll see things kind of rise up again and get active. Um, and also, if you would like to create the chemical reaction yourself at home, rather than just using a carbonated liquid, you can do that really simply by filling the cup about this full just with water and adding two tablespoons of baking soda, mixing it together so you have a baking soda and water mix, then add your popcorn and your raisins, and then pour in a little bit of vinegar. And this is gonna depend a little bit on the size of your cup and how much water you used initially, but you can just drizzle vinegar in and watch the reaction take place. That's gonna create bubbles um, from the reaction between the vinegar and the baking soda. So it's the same idea of the carbon dioxide raising up those popcorn kernels and making them dance, but you can create your own reaction pretty simply too if you don't have a carbonated liquid. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.